For us, it's nine months in, nine months on, nine months near daycare. I would love to hear your stories. I don't want anyone bashing anyone, but I would love to hear when you started your kids at daycare preschool, good experiences, bad experiences, just to share. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, we talk about motherhood, we talk about pregnancy, we do things kind of hippie, kind of natural, kind of granola. If you're into that, please subscribe. If you're not new here, Welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about daycare. Daycare with my second, because my second is a barnacle baby. Like she has always just been attached to me. I was like real nervous about daycare with my second. So I just wanted to share the experience. This is not whether or not you should do daycare. This is not an opinion. The last one I did, people had very strong opinions, basically saying it was evil if you did daycare. If you're a stay-at-home mom or a work-from-home mom, the grass is always greener, right? You're like, oh, I wish I could go to an office and like have adult conversation. And like, you feel like you're missing out. You feel like you're not getting like do things. America makes you feel like your kid needs to be independent, like sleeping on their own, all these things, which I just don't think is true. I don't know how much it damages your children, but I just am like, I think they're just so little and vulnerable that I'm just gonna be there for them when they need me to, because I can. And if I couldn't, then it, that's fine too. If you watch my channel at all, you know that there's no shaming here. I know that everybody's doing the best for their, their situation and their family. This is interesting actually. This is worth sharing before we get started. I was telling Seth the other day, I was like, we co-sleep, which I love because I feel like it's a good attachment. I feel like they feel safe. I feel like it's a good thing, but I don't know that they're getting the hours of sleep that they should be. Like these kids that are sleeping on their own, they get like 12 hours solid at night and Seth was like Shay you can't be tens in all the categories and I was like okay you're right but then you're weighing like what's more important is it, like this attachment that I think that they're getting or like the sleep and so one person might be like of course the sleep their attachments fine like, whatever so like I said it's all up to you but we should all listen to Seth and know that we can't be tens in every category but we can be tens in some categories and that's what's important and we needed to figure out which ones those are okay daycare we're gonna start with the pros and cons of daycare then I'm gonna tell you about our experience and what we've done and then we're gonna go over some of the options because there's more than daycare and how to find them okay daycare here has pros and cons. So we had a nanny over the summer, like a babysitter that came for a few hours during the day. Now we're in daycare and guess what comes along with daycare? Illness. We were so healthy all summer. I was like, what is happening? Oh, we're not in daycare. <sighs> The little petri dishes, all those little kitties, mine included. We're coming home with a lot more illness. So for illness, we like to do a little bit of prevention. We like to prevent things instead of having to take care of sick kids, which obviously we do as well. We go to a chiropractor who recommended doing zinc, doing vitamin C. Elderberry is really good for support. Vitamin D is really good for immune support. So if you're in need of some of those supplements, I got you, girl. Mary Ruth's is sponsoring this video, so you get 25% off anything on their website on top of whatever sale they have going on. So here's one thing that we, I said, toddler vitamin C, and then it says this is for ages one to three. So it's just a little dropper. You shake it up, orange vanilla, drop it on. Mm -mm -mm. My one-year-old is like, for this taste, because it's kind of tangy. My toddler loves it. Then for me, I'm really bad at recognizing trends. Huh, the trash does come every Thursday. That one I learned pretty quickly. I go through these like really low moods, they're really high moods. And luckily my husband recognizes trends and he's like, Shay, every winter, it's every winter you have a low mood. And I was like, oh, so I got myself one of those lights and vitamin D, vitamin D and K because K helps deliver the D. This can help as well in the winter time if you don't get a ton of sun like we do in Atlanta. From zero to 12 months, it tells you how many sprays, one year to 13 years. And then if you're an adult, it says I can do up to eight sprays, but I already did some this morning. Just in your mouth and it just kind of tastes like olive oil they have all sorts of vitamins they have liquid gummies elderberry they have the zinc they have this vitamin c if you are looking to support your little petri dishes this season we've so far been i don't even want to say it i'm not gonna say it so far so good so if you need to stock up on this stuff for this season 25 percent off go to maryruthorganics.com that's number one illness number two the freaking cost holy shamoli it's so expensive like you literally have to decide do i want to go to work and pay for daycare which is mostly my entire paycheck a lot of people's mortgage is equal to their daycare or do you want to stay home it's a hard it's a hard decision to make but the cost is definitely something that is uh, a thing there's two resources that i'm gonna mention one is a book called crib sheet she says that it's better for kids to go to daycare after 18 months like it's better for them to stay home for 18 months if you can and then it's better for them to be in daycare after that this other podcast i listened to on the spillover says three years i listened to it and i like half some of it i don't like some of it one thing that she said was with cost 
she was like, I'm a realist. I don't think it's going to be where moms are going to get full maternity leave for a year. But she proposed, which I feel like is very interesting because women are now working and then having children. So she's like, you've got a lot of working years. So what if we did like a social security thing where you put money towards this and then when you have a baby, you get that money and you can use it for daycare. You can use it to pay yourself. You can use it to pay a family member. You could use it to do all these things. And I'm like, that's genius but then you're gonna have people who are like i don't want kids i don't want it and then they change their mind and then they don't have like there's a lot of variables like all of these things but i was like that's kind of a good idea consider swapping out your car consider moving into a smaller house or a less expensive house for the time being that's how important she thinks being with your children the first three years is and that was something that i needed to hear i understand that some people are going to be like literally no i can there's nothing that we can change but i want to challenge some people who feel that like i really wish that i could stay home to talk with their partners and figure out if there is any wiggle room in the budget if you might have to downsize to start your family and to be home with your kids and just kind of like get creative and think about those things there are options so i just wanted to throw that in there a little food for thought anyway okay keep going also a con of daycare is it's a high turnover there's not like a good attachment that's being made usually with like your one person if you have a home daycare you're getting a little bit more of that attachment the con to a home daycare is if that one person gets sick daycare is closed right so the pros to like a daycare setting is that it's dependable i know that nearly every day i can drop my children off and they i can get my work done from this time to this time and another pro to daycare is it's like new there's new people there's new toys there's new kids to play with instead of just playing with mom and sis all day they do like crafts there it's just like different stimulation than they get at home. We did a babysitter up until 18 months. And then at 18 months, she started at this daycare. It's just nine in the morning till noon, which is perfect. It allows me to get my stuff done so I can be work mode and then mom mode. That's my favorite. If you watch my videos, you know I don't like doing 50-50. It feels icky to me. I'd rather do 100% work, 100% mom, get in the flow of work, get in the flow of mom. For my first, it was absolutely a socialization thing. Like she was a year and a half. We went to go tour this place and on the tour she was like kids kids and she wanted to get down and go play with them like immediately i was like okay and the teacher was fantastic and she's like oh well if she wants to just stay and play will you go on the tour you can and i was like okay and off she went and i left her and i went on this tour and i came back and then she was not ready to leave the first day of daycare she didn't even look back and say goodbye she was literally just like bye and walked right in the room second day a little bit harder a little bit she was like a little bit like whoa first day was fun but now i know that you like leave me and she was not so keen on it but then she was fine after that and then occasionally she'd have days that she didn't like it but i was just like what is happening we did it for like six months and then they had summer they're on the same program as school so they were off and it was about the same time that i had my second so i was like okay we have no daycare set up and i'm having a baby this cannot happen so we got into a spanish immersion daycare and she was going all day for like three days I think I knew my first would do great she was going into preschool she was excited my second I was like I'm real nervous about you because she is my barnacle baby as long as she's sitting on her perch aka me she can observe the world safely she feels good about it but as soon as like something's wrong she needs to come find me and I'm like this is gonna be really challenging so she started on a Monday before that Monday the Thursday Friday when my older one went to preschool because it's in the same church try and look for one at church we don't go to this church like on Sundays but we go to their daycare and preschool much more affordable the full time at the Spanish immersion is the same price as having them both in part-time here so we walked over there on Thursday and we were like hi this is gonna be your classroom isn't it fun look at all these things and then we went back on Friday and we were like okay here we are and Miss Kitty was like do you want to just come in and play with her for a little while so we went inside it kind of blows my mind that this is not an option I talked to someone in New Zealand she's like no we did that we went for like the first week or the first month or something we sat with our kids at daycare so that they could get comfortable with it and I was like this seems like the most genius plan ever I sat there for like a half an hour and I tried walking in not holding her. So I tried having her hold my hand and we walked in together so that I didn't have to like put her down. Cause I felt like if I had just had to hand her over, she would have been reaching for me and she would have like not done well. So we got to walk in together. She wanted me to like go and play with her. And I was like, no, I'm gonna sit right here. You go play just to give her a little bit of like independence, go check it out on your own. But I'm here if you need to like come sit with me. And she did, she came and sat with me and then she'd go play and then she'd come and sit with me and she'd go play and she'd come and sit with me. Then she started like wandering around. So at like 30, 40 minutes, I'm still sitting there and I'm like, okay, I don't wanna overstay 
stay my welcome here. Like we can go. And she wasn't ready to go. And I wasn't ready for her to start daycare that day. I was like, you're starting on Monday. What are we doing? So Miss Katie was like, if you want her to stay, like if she'll stay, you, you can leave her here and come back and get her at noon. And okay. I went over to Ez and I was like, I'm gonna go get your diaper. I'll be right back, bye. She waved goodbye to me. Picked her up at noon and she's fine. Then when the following Monday came, she was running to her class. She was so excited to go to her class. For her, I don't think it's socialization like it was for my first. I think this was just like something new and exciting. She got to observe, she got to like see new stuff, experience new stuff. And I just couldn't believe that that's how it worked. I do think that 18 months is a good time to get them to like transition. So like with the podcast of three years, I'm like, I don't know, my kids seem to do okay. And it's just my kids, so maybe that's not for everyone, but like, it felt like it took 18 months for her to kind of like feel more and more comfortable away from me and then like be excited to explore without me. Going into some of the options of what you can do if you don't want to do daycare because this lady said daycare is the least good option. This was the phrase she used, least good, for a variety of reasons. You can listen to the podcast if you want. But she said the best option is a family member. So if you can pay a family member or if you have a retired parent and they can watch your kids, she said it's the best because they get to build that attachment that will be there for the rest of their lives. And she's like, if you're a single mom and you have to go to work, find another single mom and get a family member or babysitter somebody that's like constant and so that the ratios are low she's like at a daycare you have all this emotional regulating that's really hard to do when you've got seven kids to one adult but if you've got like a smaller group of kids with this one person then each single mom or whatever each family is paying a lower amount and the babysitters make it out better first of all if you do have a family member that can watch your kids please don't take that for granted i know there can be conflict and clashes and like parenting and all of that and some parents are not they can't it's fine but if you have a parent that is like competent retired able to watch your children and willing please know how blessed you are and I know that there's pros and cons I know that it's not gonna be perfect but that is financially a nice thing it's nice that your kids get to bond with your it's just nice so for the nanny slash babysitter option that's the same thing you get that one-on-one -on -one attention we found ours through care.com I think it's like 40 bucks for the month but you get to start chatting with people interviewing people I kind of just paid for that month or you can pay for three months for like cheaper and you can just start sifting through people and kind of finding one this podcast did say which I loved which I have not done and I wish that I had when you have someone new like a babysitter or a nanny come in for the first week or the first couple days don't work just be there and hang out all together with your kids you your kids and the babysitter so they can see how you interact with your kids you can see how your kids interact with them you can kind of show them like the rhythms of what you do how you feed them how like just stuff so that they can kind of see how it works because I definitely have had babysitters where I'm like because I'm here I'm like I don't love the way that you're in a power struggle with my two-year-old or just like random things where I'm like oh, I don't love that but I don't know how to like approach it my kids aren't in danger they're just kind of getting upset I wish that I'd done that and I will absolutely do that moving forward just spend a couple of days all together just to kind of like figure it out together find your network who works in a high school who works in a college and like see if they know anyone that they think is reliable and dependable to come and babysit or nanny for your kids those are the two ways that we've found people the third which is my dream which is what I aspire to is to have an au pair an au pair is somebody that comes over from another country who lives in your house with you and helps you with whatever I was an au pair in Spain I went to Spain with this family your duties vary depending on your family and so you negotiate all of that out up front before you decide yes mine was literally talk English to them from the time they get home to the time to go to bed they had a stay-at-home mom I didn't have any extra duties there was another au pair in my village who had to bring the kids to school laundry dishes clean up the house like way more responsibility but that's what they agreed to and that's what she did and that's fine you just have to figure out what you're okay with and then communicate that with your family in the US you can do agencies that will like background them and have them vetted and stuff I just went through great up world.com and FaceTime them I had to pay for my ticket out usually the family pays for the au pair to come in but we our house is not big enough to have another human living here if it were up to me it would be a yes my husband's like absolutely not but I'm like let's have every let's just fill all the rooms with people because I would want them to be here and like hang out with us and do things with us and like teaching our kids Spanish like that would be the that would be the greatest so that is what I aspire to so the next house that we buy whenever we do that we'll have a space for an au pair a thousand percent that's just my dream the last option is daycare and if that's the option that you choose that's fine just make sure that you feel comfortable you feel like your kids feel comfortable 
see if you can stay a day and play with your kids. I don't know, I don't know why that's not a thing. And you have to decide, do you want a center? Do you want an in-home? Pros and cons to that, like centers usually have a little bit more structure. In-home, you get more of, like I have a friend whose kids go to in-home and she's like, and they're sick again and the daycare is closed. Where at my daycare, they get a sub or they go whatever. So yeah. For us, it's nine months in, nine months on, nine months near daycare. And I understand that that I, I feel very lucky to be able to do that. It's also very hard to work from home for the first year and a half, not having much childcare, but I always have like a babysitter or something to at least come for a little bit. That's our story. I really thought Ez was gonna struggle, but she just nailed it. And I think it's because I got to go in and play with her. I don't know. I would love to hear your stories. I don't want anyone bashing anyone, but I would love to hear when you started your kids at daycare or preschool, good experiences, bad experiences, just to share so that when people are trying to decide what to do, they have a little more resistance. If you have an au pair, where, how did you, what like website did you use? How did you find your babysitter? How did you find your daycare? Like, let's just have the comments be a good resource for childcare. Yeah. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time, bye.